Ah, greetings, fellow Hoobians. Well, hope you had a good Christmas, and I hope you all really enjoyed this year's Doctor Christmas special. I know I did. So anyway, let's continue our look at the fourth Doctor era with Underworld. In the history of the Time Lords, their involvement with the Minion, Minions of Minios is regarded as a disaster. The Minions looked on them as gods, but, having learned much from their science, later expelled the Time Lords, who thereafter adopted a policy of non-intervention. Kinda sorta like the Star Trek Prime Directive, where Pete for several officers are not allowed to interfere with with um, with internal conflicts and also pre-warp civilization, so there you go. The Minions resented the Time Lords for their dominion over the Min over Minios. Subsequently, the Minions engaged in a civil war using the advanced weapons the Time Lords gave them. In the final conflict, the Minions destroyed their world. Two ships left Minios before the final conflict, one carrying the race bank of the Minions, the other intended to find the race bank and bring the Minions to new homeworld, Minios II. The Minion civilization re retained some Time Lord gifts, not least cellular rejuvenation and the use of pacifier gusts altered the mental state of the aggressor. Huh, interesting. At the, edge of the, uh, at the edge of expanding universe, the TARS materializes on one of the Minion ships called R1C. The four Doctor, Leela, and K9 visit the bridge of the spaceship. The crew of four, Jackson, Herrick, Orif, and Tala, are on a quest. The quest is the quest. That has taken many millennia and they have rejuvenated, rejuvenated many times. Their aim is to find the missing ship, the P7E which disappeared en route to Minios II while carrying the genetic race banks of the entire species. They have, however, finally traced the P7E signal and head into a nebula to locate the missing ship. In the process, the r one is nearly destroyed and is almost transformed into a planetoid as small space rocks are attracted to it. I guess it must, hmm, I guess it must have a magnetic personality. <laughs> a similar fate actually seems to have happened to the P7E which is found at the center of a small planet. The R1C crashes into this planet. Uh-oh. Civilization on the P-70 planetoid has taken a curious turn. Most of the population live as slaves, digging rock for fuel and sustenance, but they are cold and killed in rock collapses called Skyfalls. The situation is overseen by guards who are in turn responsible for two robots called Seers. In overall control is the Oracle, a powerful supercomputer which has shaped a perverse society. Evidently, the P-7E became trapped in the planet millennia earlier and the entire basis of the mission was lost over time. The Doctor and Leela venture into this perverted society and encounter Idis, a young man nearly killed in a skyfall, learning how the local population is managed and terrorized. The Seers and Oracle exist in a protected citadel at the heart of the planetoid, clearly the P-7E, and the Doctor, Leela, and, Aid and Idis venture there, in the process rescuing Idis's father, Idmon, who was due to be sacrificed to the Oracle. Other slaves are free too, and flee to the R1C where Jackson makes them welcome. However, the crucial, the crucial race banks remain in the, remain in the control of the Oracle. <coughs> the Doctor, Leela, and Idis venture to the Citadel again to get the precious cargo. However. The Seers have meanwhile captured Herrick and give him what he thinks are the two race banks to take back to his ship. Orf and Tala are overjoyed, little realizing that their friend actually brought fission bombs back to the R1C. Dun dun dun! The Doctor has meanwhile made it to the core of the Citadel and confronted the Oracle. He, succeed, he succeeds in locating and stealing the real race banks and then heads off with Leela and Idis to get back to the probe ship. The guards try but fail to defeat, to defeat their flight. The Doctor gives the real race banks to Jackson, and then takes the fakes out of the craft. Idis takes advantage of the situation to round up the other slaves, or trogs, and lead them to the safety of the arm with sea, while the Doctor engineers the fission grenades that are returned to the Oracle. With moments to spare, the arm with sea blasts away, loaded with the slaves and the race banks, and is, put, and is pushed outward from the planetoid by the explosion of the fission grenades. The TARDIS crew depart. Wishing the minions well as they journey on to Minios 2, their quest complete. So, yeah. Not bad, eh? Not bad at all. Anyway, let's look at some continuity production and background elements of this story. 
It is during this story that the origin of the Time Lord's policy of non-intervention is finally explained. The truth behind the destruction of Minos is revealed in the Big Finish, audio produ uh, Big Finish Productions audio drama Gallifrey, The Inquiry. The Doctor references an untelevised trip to, Bla to Blackpool where he implies he ate rock. Although the Sixth Doctor and Perry would have visited Blackpool in the unfilmed story The Nightmare Affair, no on-screen adventures before or after Underworld depict this. The Doctor also mentions Ulysses, whom he met in The Myth Makers. Underworld was recorded entirely in studio in October 1977. In an attempt to save money on production costs, the serial was recorded using the color separation overlay, or CSO, technique. This approach involves recording the actors against a blue screen and then superimposing them on models of the sets, and saving on the costs involved in set construction. Huh, interesting. The serial borrows many elements and parallels from Greek mythology, in much the same way as the later The Horns of Nymon. In particular, the story draws on the tale of Jason and the Argonauts. References include the Minion race, related to the Minoans, the search for P7E, Persephone, and character names such as Jackson, Jason, Orp, Orpheus, Herrick, Heracles, Tala, Tylus, Idmon, and Idis. The connection is highlighted at the end of the episode, with the Doctor likening Jackson and his journey to Jason and his quest for the Golden Fleece. So yeah, overall a pretty good story, and I like the parallels to Greek mythology, so yeah, overall, pretty good story. So, in the end, I give Underworld. Four Sonic Screwdrivers out of five. Well, join me next week as we take a look at the invasion of time. Dun, dun, dun. So, until next week, which is going to be my, which is going to be 2018, so that should be interesting. This is Hoobie and Queen saying, oh my giddy out, when I say run, run, I've ever seen polarity of the neutron flow. Would you like it, really, baby? Fantastic. Z. Geronimo! Bow ties are cool, fezzes are cool, and Stetsons are cool. <laughs>